the roller coaster ride of the Virginia General Assembly is in full gear, and we are already seeing some crazy proposals from leftists to radically change our state constitution to allow things like unlimited abortion and putting gender ideology in the constitution. What could possibly come next? Plus, some people in New York are trying to force Chick-fil-A to stay open on Sundays after leaders there previously wanted to close or ban them. We'll talk about all this and more. Welcome to Speak Up Virginia, equipping you to speak up on the life, family, and freedom issues that matter most to you. From the Family Foundation, I'm your host, Candy Cushman, with our president, Victoria Cobb. Well, welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us for Speak Up Virginia. Boy, we are just diving headfirst into the session, and so we've got a lot to talk about today. But I do want to just start out with a little bit of fun at the beginning, and that is I've been noticing all of these kind of in and out, what's in and out for 2024. I've seen social media posts. The Washington Post even did a whole article on this subject. And so I thought it'd be fun for us to talk about it. Now, I'll talk first about kind of what I've been seeing people saying. So AI and space exploration, I think the Washington Post, you know, pointed out those are definitely in. Um, I saw some other fun fashion ones like um, women's big tote bags are out, but backpacks are in. Now, personally, I like that one because I carry a backpack around. <laughs> yeah. But you have a big tote I, bag. I just, right? I don't think they're actually that hit. I think they're missing the point, maybe for adults, but if you look at Gen Z and Gen Alpha in particular, I would call them fanny packs. They would die. <laughs> but what's in are the Lululemon, like, and they have to be Lululemon apparently, but you know, they're the little things that literally would have been so uncool yeah. If they didn't have Lululemon on them, but that's actually what's in. Hopefully, anyway. Matt's not wearing a fanny pack no, right now. No, 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 I think this yeah, is my, a girl thing. I haven't seen any boys with fanny packs yet, but we're gender okay. confused in our society. Yes, so who knows are. what we will see? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, also, it's interesting to see some of the language trends, and I thought it was interesting that the phrase "wait for it" is listed as just really passe. Like that is, you know, you are outdated if you're still using that, which I, I think I might be guilty of occasionally. Yeah. Um, but I thought this word that's supposed to be in right now among teens, um, chuggy. Hopefully, I'm saying it right. I'll probably get corrected. Like try hard. Like like you're no. not cool. That well, one? cringy. It's yeah, cringy. It's like like it's you're... Now it's chuggy. Okay. Yeah, I, I again, and the important part with these words is is when you're older than cool, you have to be careful when you use them because even yeah. if you use them correctly, I've learned. So you I sound mean, like it, you're trying too hard. Correct. <laughs> they do not like you to um, act like you're cool if you are not. So I mean, simple things, even like a pair of shoes. So like I got a pair of um, they're, they're called Nike Dunks, and you know all the kids are wearing or whatever. And I you know I and I asked my kid to go get my Dunks because I was trying to distinguish between those and my running shoes. And she looked at me and she goes, "Don't ever let me hear you say that word again." I was like, "That's the name of the shoe," but apparently like that I'm like too old to say that word. And then like there's other ones that you have to watch like Riz, you know, like charisma, the kids I've use heard it. that. Okay, yeah. but here's the thing, it became the word of the year for 2023. So yeah. now that makes it like it's out now. Yes, like once adults catch on, I think it goes out. Okay, we're kind of what makes it go out is when we catch on to it. So we have to be very careful. Very careful, very careful, very um, careful. Jesse, I think I saw you with some cool Nike shoes on. Are those dunks or no, something? No, those else? were not dunks. Okay. They were very cool. <laughs> Jesse wears very cool shoes, but yeah. All right. Yeah, I've got some Adidas red uh, heeled sneakers, so those are pretty fun. They They're are pretty cool. cool. <laughs> All right, Victoria, I thought it would be fun just real quick to put our little spin on this okay. with politics. So I just had to start out with, I'd like to be able to say that political candidates using online streaming for porn to make money hopefully that is out i'm sorry i just had to say that yeah i don't know i unfortunately i don't think you're you're right because we have this whole um i'd call it a pr tour that Susanna gibson that was the candidate that did this you yeah. know went online she's got this whole pr thing she's doing with interviews with politico and others and even a um they're trying to revise the revenge porn statue in our statute in our, our code to try to like uh, anyway, my, my only point is, um, no, we're going to be talking about this okay. for a while. The idea that what happened there would be associated with revenge is ridiculous. Porn is completely ridiculous. Right. There was no, uh, re yes. anyway, because, because this was voluntarily. She commercialized done. her own. <laughs> yes. So, 
Um, but w this is still being used in Virginia to, ch I don't know what they're trying to do with that. Yeah, but it's, anyway, all that to say, the, unfortunately, we're going to be talking about it a lot longer she, than this She's past going election. around saying she's standing up for digital privacy, which oh, is also I mean, ironic. she's turned herself into the victim, yeah, definitely. So, so I, don't, I hate to say it. I, I'd like that to be out, might but I'm not, not be sure. totally out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But I think we can definitely say that governor vetoes are going to be in this year. We sure hope so. Now, again, it has to be the right vetoes. We saw a governor in Ohio, Governor DeWine, veto the wrong thing in a in a gender. May God prevent and, us from and, that scenario. And they're overriding it, right? But we're probably not going to have a scenario where our governor has the opportunity to override a good bill in the wrong way. And he wouldn't probably do that anyway. So he's going to have a lot that he's going to have in front of him of bad bills. And we hope he uses his veto pen a lot. So we think it's, um, we hope he will set the trend of being very, very comfortable with vetoing a whole lot. <laughs> Are there any more you care to throw out here? Um, I mean, sure. What's going to be hot? I mean, you know, the big discussion is the sports facilities that they're trying to bring to Alexandria. So will they be in or out? I, you know, I think most people think that's going to that's going to fly. That really? you know, people you really want in? it. I think it'll be in. I think okay. it'll be the hot new thing. Um, we're hoping casinos are out. We're hoping, but um, again, they're, they're out trying in to. Richmond. They're out in Richmond. They're trying to get it in rest in. But I don't think even the people up there are that jazzed about it. So I hope casinos are yeah, still I, out. I thought it was interesting the McLean Citizens Association came out against it. Because so you don't want this in your backyard. Nobody yeah. does. And certainly not areas that aren't economically depressed and sold this lie about them, right? Like, yeah. So anyway, yeah, I don't know. There's, um, I'm ready for marijuana to be out already. All right. Well, we're going to get into okay. all that. <laughs> Victoria's jumping ahead here. We're going to get into all that, what's happening in the Virgin, uh, General Assembly session. But I did want to kind of um, address an elephant in the room at the national level and that is what's going on with Trump and them taking his name off the state ballots. Tell us your thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I mean, this is pretty stunning because you have, I mean, again, there have been lawsuits filed in like 20 some, like a lot of the states, if not most of them. And they're to try to not even let him be a viable candidate, let alone once we get into what happens in the actual election, um, mostly trying to get him off even the primary ballots. So these are even before you get to the general. Um, most of them are not flying, but we do now have a, a situation where the main, in particular, the main mm -hmm. secretary of state has said, yes, he has somehow, he's an insurrectionist. Insurrection. Yeah. Um, and therefore that violates, you know, that you can't be an insurrection and be on what the What were they ballot. saying, the 14th Amendment or something? Yeah, yeah. It's and it's and it was, you know, a Civil War law, actually. Yeah. Like, it was designed around that. Um, and and so it's, it's alarming. Most of these have been shot down by courts. I mean, most courts are going, okay, the biggest thing is he doesn't have a guilty verdict on anything around insurrection, right? So there's still, that's still being litigated of whether he, you can't just, somebody does something, you don't like it, you call yeah. it insurrection, and then boom, they can't be on the ballot. Yeah, it does seem to me a jaw-dropping thing. I mean, regardless of how you feel personally about former President Trump, um, the fact that you are attempting as a state official or a judge or whatever, because you have we have Colorado, Colorado, judges, yeah, um, just trying attempting to wipe his name off the ballot and not even letting millions of voters decide. I mean. That's talk about disenfranchisement. Well, this is the thing. I mean, what's what what is scary? Okay, so just try to remove yourself from opinions about Trump, right? Yeah. This isn't really about the person. Just think of the process. America has been known for the peaceful transfer of power. That is what is beautiful about America. And the elections is a big part of that. That is the methodology. And so this idea that anybody can start going after their political opponents and try to not even let them have a competing shot in front of the electorate. People decide on them. Yes. I mean, obviously, if you don't like Trump, I mean, people can vote him out. And what's interesting is this is happening in states where largely, I mean, where Colorado, those are states that are probably not going to vote for Trump I, yeah. anyway. I it, mean, I guess they don't, this yeah. is the primary, so they just don't want him to be the Republican nominee, I suppose. But it's not like... I think it makes us feel like they don't believe we're able to educate ourselves, that we are so stupid. Correct. They need to take care of this for us and jump in at, at the state law, you know, at the government official level. It's it, insulting. It to reminds voters. me back when we talked about Hillary Clinton's comment about people need to be retrained. That's I what feel they think. like they view that, you yeah. know, that anybody that would have supported Trump, if, it, if he's on the ballot, those people need to not even have the opportunity to make such a I guess they would say foolish well, you know, decision. Well, the or problem so forth. is we are seeing the backlash with people now trying to do this with Biden. So yeah. it does open that can yeah, of worms. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they got to remember this is on both sides. Again, remove the person and let's talk about they'd better be guilty of something before we even talk about, like officially in the legal manner, guilty. Yes. Not, I mean, this is sort of 
They're jump, jumping the gun, jumping over. Well, we always have processes. to be careful. Anytime somebody loses rights or opportunities before a court has found them guilty on anything, we have to be so careful. That is what the court of you know, law is for. That's what justice is for. And so just this is a threat to justice, this is a threat to democracy. Um, and so w the Supreme Court's going to step in. So we um, hope that they make a decision that supports democracy and justice, not the person. But yeah, I mean, it's important. You ought to well, have a shot. And I hope the Supreme Court will see it that way. We'll, we'll see what yes, happens. Yes. All right. Well, presidential politics aside, let's look at what's happening right here in Virginia with the General Assembly. We're about probably about a week into it by now. Um, we are full steam into it. And what I'd like to do is just go over with you today, Victoria, some of the highlights and lowlights of what we are expecting out of this session. And we will be getting into more detail on specific bills in, in future episodes. It's going to have a big impact on biblically minded Virginians and families and, you know, the unborn. We'll be getting into all that detail. Um, but we're going to try to do kind of a broader look today. And so, Victoria, can you just start us off with some of the bad bills, maybe the low lights here? Yeah. So let me actually start with we're hearing a rumor that this could be the largest amount of bills ever introduced into the General Assembly. So the most amount of ideas, which when the majorities are liberal, we know we're going to have a lot of bad ideas. Right. So we start with there's going to be a big pool of bad ideas. Our team typically tracks upwards of like 300 bills. And that's mm -hmm. good ideas and bad ideas, things we want to put yeah. forward. And um, I have a bad feeling it could be a high number this wow. year that we could be tracking. More than in, 300, uh, um, it could possibly. Be very, yeah, this is why we try to build a really robust team because, remember, once those start moving, you got to be in all the committees, you got to testify. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just a lot to it. So anyway, so bad bills, to your question. Sorry, I was just putting a little context yeah, that's in there. Good. Um, bad bills. Um, obviously, I feel like you can't start the session without talking about the worst bill, which is the constitutional amendment on abortion. So they, as they've you know, have done in other states, our liberals in our state, our pro boards are trying to put into our constitution a, a unfettered access to abortion um, at any point in, in the pregnancy. Um, and this is just, I mean, as folks know, this is super alarming because, again, you're, it, the bill will go through the General Assembly, and if we don't stop it, the governor can't stop it. So I just want to remind people of that. Mm -hmm, There's no veto yeah. available. So this is, we've got to do our part to move people in the right direction so that we don't have a majority um, supporting it. But it's the fundamental right to reproductive, you know, right? Yeah. Reproductive rights, which is yeah. what they always call we, it. We talked about how this proposal does not even use the word yeah. abortion. They don't like it, that word. It, so th what you, s they refer to a fundamental right to reproductive freedom. freedom. Now explain to us why that it's so broad it does threaten parental rights so explain that oh yeah to it's us. extremely broad um not only just in the idea that it doesn't just talk about abortion reproductive rights could be much wider than that right so it's birth control it's, it's it can be we, we don't know how it will be interpreted anything but anything considered reproductive freedom honestly right? what concerned uh, you know we had some attorneys sitting in a room last night yeah. just talking about does it get to literally the act that creates human life meaning um there's just a lot we're worried about can, inhibiting so basically no one can assist anybody block anybody from you know from anything uh, involved with anything anything reproductive. reproductive so the question is um first of all it does not have any age restrictions so we think it's very clear it would overturn oh. our parental consent law okay. so that's step one but more than that um just it opens a door to um can parents block a child that they do not believe should be having sex in their home. Oh, yeah. I mean, I literally, that, yeah. li like, at what point do the reproductive rights start? So this is just really scary oh, yes. in terms of just a very broad, and of course they're broad in other ways, which we find very ridiculous, which is they talk about any individual's reproductive rights. Well, reproductive rights, um, men can't reproduce, we, but they couldn't even put woman in the bill. So mm -hmm. we always just find that just... Yeah, what's coming what the, with that? What, what in the world is that yeah. going on there? So, um, yeah, it's well, a... Well, and just to... Pause on the the parental rights for a minute because we're we're assuming a lot of people know about that, but I just it, it that is a big deal too because you're talking about what you can't possibly a parent couldn't stop their twelve year old. Well, that's the question. Um, what is the line here? Abortion? If it is yeah. a fundamental right, so you know, fundamental rights are things like our right to speech and our right to you know exercise our faith in the public. Square. I mean, these these are fundamental rights, and that's what they're they're elevating this to that. And so yes, it gets into a number of things. We're just I mean, we're concerned about things like um, how do you stop coercion? Um, right. How do you stop? I mean, what does this do around sex trafficking? Right. I mean, there's just because you could have um, young teenage girls, even preteen being exploited. And the school, you know, we have seen 
stories, incidents where the school takes the kid for an abortion or the, the someone in the school. And, you know, maybe that's protected now because parents are cut out of the picture, right? Yes. Like, because they have this reproductive freedom right. Yes. And I and I have to mention also that they have a bill, a related bill, on extradition. So what is that? That's the whole issue of some states have banned abortion. Some states have said, we don't believe in, in you know, anything that doesn't protect okay. human life at a certain point. Um, we have a bill in there that's going to affect um, things like if you get an abortion pill in Virginia, but you go back to your state, um, that's... There's a whole nother, I think they are really trying to make Virginia a sanctuary state for anything mm -hmm. goes abortion. Um, now you have talked about how this not only um, eradicates parental rights in a lot of ways, but also it gets into the whole surrogacy issue. Yeah, I mean, the constitutional amendment could affect it. We also, again, they have another bill. I mean, they're working all angles on this. They have a bill that would commercialize surrogacy, so. Well, well let's, the constitutional amendment, let's just start there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, the, b the bottom line is if all things related to reproductive r freedom, so mm -hmm. to speak, and that includes everything around getting pregnant. Yes. Then we you know, we already have bad surrogacy laws and this sort of constitutionalizes that could. Const yeah. If you're right. Protect, if you're commercialized. Yes. If your right to um, to to reproduce pro or con mm -hmm. is 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 fundamental then then yes what does that mean around other people doing that for you um but worse than that is the is there you know like i mean that's if it gets into the constitution but faster than that i guess i faster, should say yeah. it could get through the the legislature as a bill that would literally create a third party it would allow third party companies to come in and there are literally companies that market and advertise and try to incentivize women to be surrogates in okay. virginia at least right now which is still terrible we have surrogacy laws that allow contracts between two individuals this is getting in money in the middle of it and saying, let's have a, you know, yeah. we're going to let companies come in Virginia, advertise, incentivize, and, you know, that preys on those that are low income, that need money, that this looks like one way they could, it's, it's. I can basically sell my womb. Right. You're selling um, your, your womb. My, bo exactly my body, right. my, I mean, they talk about empowering women with their body, but this disempowers them for their body to be a commodity for wealthier people to be able to use their, yes. what, they and call I, it rent a womb. Yes. And of course we're hearing about it on the news. I don't know if yeah. folks saw the Paris Hilton thing recently. Um, you know, she basically said they're using a, you know, they, 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 they believe in surrogacy for their own situation because quote, safety is what she said, which didn't yeah, make any sense. Yeah, there's been some more that's come out okay, about that. Okay, so what is, what is it? She, she's more. saying it relates to anxiety that she feels due to past trauma, like sh sexual abuse type of trauma um, and anxiety she feels in a doctor's office. There's been some more out about that. Probably because they got some backlash when it initially came out with not a lot, lot of detail. Because, it, I mean, you know, the initial reaction was like, wait, you just don't want to be, you don't want to let your body be pregnant. Yeah. But you got to remember, when I, when I see that, and people need to think about this, where is the safest place for an unborn baby? In their mother's womb. That is the safest place in society for any child, is in their mother's womb. And you're already putting your needs in front of this kid when you're saying, I'm not willing to protect them in my own womb. I'm going to pass them off. I mean, I, I hate to be crass, but it... Well, it's the right... We always lose touch with the rights of the child to... to you know, the child have, wants have to mom know, and dad. And we, I don't think, and this is just an opinion, yeah. but I'm not convinced we know scientifically everything that happens in the womb that helps you yeah. become the person that you become, right? We're learning things. We learned about the blood exchange when you, yeah. you know, like that the, the mother and baby are kind of protecting each other from sickness. That's a beautiful thing, but we don't even know the half of it is my guess. God created such a beautiful thing and we're exporting it. Yeah. And, and. Paris Hilton is not the only one. There are lots of Hollywood stars coming out that they're choosing the surrogacy option. And just to name a few, there's Khloe Kardashian that's talked about it. Um, and, you know, while, while Paris Hilton's situation is just there's some nuance going on there, but there's broader issues, broader principles at play. You know, we don't want to we're not. Um, unsympathetic about the sure. trauma that she has experienced, but there sure. are broader principles at play here that are being far wider than her and being commercialized. And I just want to mention this. And adoption one. is a beautiful thing. Adoption if you've been through trauma and don't want to hold a baby in your in your own womb, adoption is a beautiful thing. Well, too. and I just want to mention what this one um, television actress, Jamie Chung, said because she was more open about choosing surrogacy. More, I think, she goes down the um, con more convenience, not. That's what like, I'm worried about. I'm worried about yeah. this being a choice of convenience. So she talks about, um, I'll just read this quote that she had in Today Parents. Quote, I was terrified of putting my life on hold for two plus years in my industry. It feels like you're easily forgotten if you don't work within the next month of your last job. 
Wow. So, yeah, so inter- literally the workforce culture is like, why she's choosing surrogacy. And I, yeah, we're, that's not where we want to be as women. We want to empower women to be mothers in every sense of the word, starting from pregnancy. And yes, they, if they choose so, to work also. So back to what's happening in Virginia. So they're trying to, so just to help people understand right now, you can kind of, you can ha- kind of have private arrangements. Yes. Unfortunately, we have, we have already opened this door. But bringing in third-party companies that would literally post ads all over, you know, just imagine yeah. commercials running and websites and the whole nine yards saying, hey, come, you know, earn money through renting out your womb. That's not where we want to be. All right. Well, sadly, um, you know, we were talking originally about unlimited abortion. Yeah, in the sorry. We were on the Constitutional <laughs> Amendment, and I kind of got on a bill. So, there's just a lot of bad there, ideas. There's a lot. Um, but that's, that's not the only radical amendment being proposed. Tell us about what's going on with marriage. Yeah, I mean, we're deeply concerned. We knew this was coming because they've tried it before, but they're trying to repeal the marriage amendment. But they're doing more than that. They're trying to repeal and replace the marriage amendment. So not just take out the words that say, hey, you know, marriage is, is not permitted between t- people of the same sex. Now they're trying to put in a new definition and their last year their new definition was polygamy right it actually literally included we're not even going to limit this thing to two people this year their definition it it, for the very first time it will include a differentiation between sex and gender in our constitution so they have a list of things you know sex gender uh, race so forth and um, so gender is in there so what that means functionally is not just are we going to have same-sex marriage which is the functional situation in Virginia now because of a Burgerfell despite the fact that we have a state constitution we have functionally same-sex marriage in Virginia but but what's going to do is it's going to put this idea that gender is a unique thing separate from sex in our constitution which plays down all the bills we talk about like girls you know sports okay. being protected from boys um bathrooms sports and locker rooms all separ- of those in high school sports being separated by a biological a biological sex yes okay yeah so we so if, once you put that in the constitution constitution is bigger than greater than law that if that Everything, makes sense yeah so then if they if they you know school wants to have a certain policy somebody's going to point to that constitution and they're going to say this is unconstitutional you know if you want to protect girls and not have biological boys in your sports we go to do that. Some school, some you know, either through policy or through law. Somebody's going to go. No, but look at the Constitution. It says these are. It recognizes. Right. Um, so basically, we are putting transgenderism or gender ideology yeah. into our Constitution. Yeah. So they've taken it. You know, they've taken it to a whole other level. Again, this is um, just this constantly broadening and and really what it is is undefining things we're not gonna have a definition of marriage that makes any sense we're not gonna have a definition of gender that makes any sense you know that sex is no longer connected to your gender yeah all right well let's get into the third low light here okay um and that is what's going on with marijuana yeah so you know we unfortunately sort of um legalized certain amounts of marijuana that people could grow their own plant they could you know be caught with a a certain amount but um, what has not been done in Virginia is created a commercial market so you don't you'll see um, you know CBD stores but not marijuana distribution THC products being sold on the corner of your local like, like pot shop on correct. every corner kind correct. of thing we is do where not have yeah. that yet that is where I think they're trying to head this year and so we are working incredibly hard to help people understand the dangers of that and um, you know and it's going to be an issue that we're going to really have to work on through the legislature. The governor has not come out and made an official position against that this year. So he's, um, so we also are obviously going to work to influence the governor's office on this. This is now that's alarming. He was asked about it after his State of the Commonwealth address. And he kind of said, he said, you, he said he doesn't have any interest. Yeah, in he's it. just not, this isn't like a, he doesn't have a specific passion around it already on a certain direction, which means that our folks need to help him have a passion around not doing it in case it gets you need to, to his have desk. an interest in preventing, preventing it. it. That's <laughs> yeah. exactly right. Okay. Um, you know, so but imagine, I mean, all the shops you do see that currently do vape or do CBD or whatever. Imagine how many could turn into marijuana shops in a, overnight. Um, and so it's just a deeply concerning thing. We already know folks are driving with marijuana. Thankfully, we're seeing some good bills. Um, I, for example, a simple bill simply saying that, you know, marijuana is there's going to be a presumption if you're pulled over you know having had marijuana that you are intoxicated we do that with other drugs right like Mm -hmm. if you're you know if you're pulled over and you have any smid of meth in your or yeah so anyway so um there are we are seeing some good bills to address the fact that just this idea that we started allowing people to have marijuana at all has caused 
significant concerns on All right. Road. So we're looking at sweeping commercialization of surrogacy and sweeping commercialization of marijuana. It's all about the corner. money. Follow this, the money. This is all yeah. every opportunity for more industry, good or bad, to come into Virginia. And if the government can make some, you know, yeah. on the side off of anything, which marijuana, that's part of the probably the stake there. You know, I realize it can feel like a really big downer when we come out of this talking about how we're commercializing all of these devastating things. And I do have to mention It's a Wonderful Life. It feels like we're trying to, people are trying to turn Virginia into Pottersville, like, you know, and It's a Wonderful Life. But I want to encourage people that we're not just going to be sitting by and watching all this happen. We are speaking up to stop it. We're going to be powering, empowering all of you to do that too. Yep. So, that's why we're here to stop the bad stuff, to stop this kind of devastation. We're going to do all we can to counteract that. So be encouraged that way. Um, also, just the fact that we have time on this constitutional amendment. I wanted to mention that. Yeah, it is a two year, two and a half year process, really, because it has to pass this year in order for it to move forward or next year. If it passes one of those two years, then you have to have an election. So you have a whole new General Assembly, and then the same exact language has to pass again in 2026, and then it would go to the ballot. So yes, we have different points at which we can stop it. Yeah, so unlike you know other states that are yes, rushing this through, we, we have time to get the word out to people. Well, we have some time. I don't want to overemphasize that because we got to start now. Yes, but we're not going to wait. <laughs> yeah, you all will have an opportunity to speak into this. So... Um, now, Victoria, I did want to quickly mention, you know, the positive things that people can jump in and support, the the uh, highlights. Will you cover some of those for us? Yeah, we are certainly moving forward with important bills. We're not going to just, you know, roll over and not advance our agenda. And so, uh, you know, an example would be the Baby Born Alive Act. We've talked a lot about that in the past. We um, got pretty far with it in the past. And um, so this is just the idea that if a child is born, as a result of an abortion that doesn't isn't successful, that we're going to do everything possible to keep this child alive. This is such an important conversation because it's amazing to me that we still have this as a possibility in Virginia, yeah. that that could still happen here. Yeah, it does seem like we're at a level of barbarity yes. if we are willing to leave an infant on the table and just let them die. So we, we're trying to get at that yes. basic level of civilization you and, know, and that I we think, can all agree on. And I think the discussion really draws out the extremes on the abortion yeah. side. I think people need to understand. I think there's a lot of Virginians that don't realize how extreme the position is of those who are pro-choice. And I think that yeah. needs to be exposed. Yeah, and that's Nick Freitas bringing that forth yes, again. Yes, Delegate Freitas. We're thrilled to have him. He's a great yeah. spokesman for this. All right. Well, I also wanted to talk about a little bit this adoption tax credit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this is just simply trying to say, look, this is a this is an important, positive thing that families are doing. And we want to incentivize that. And it also is very costly. Most people don't realize that adoption really is um, a hard and costly process. I wish it weren't. But mm. it's a four thousand dollar tax credit to a family that chooses to adopt. So this should have already been again, we should already have this in place. And, and I think that one's important because, you know, we are really trying to speak up against this unlimited abortion. But it's important to remind people the, imp the good part of having a family yes. and kids being a blessing. So that's why I like that we're getting behind this adoption tax credit. Absolutely. Right? The other side of that. And, and we want to do everything possible to get these kids that are in foster situation that are not on a track to be returned to their parents we want to we want to get them in homes and so if we can do anything yeah. to incentivize that why haven't we done it already yes that their life is important all right well we'd really be remiss if we did not talk about the efforts to protect female sports yes we're back with those again as you know we put a big effort into that last year we're going to have actually several bills several patrons really trying to push that house and senate side so um, we're excited about this we believe that virginia is behind this we believe that this is the majority of virginians that say look Biological girls should not have to compete against biological boys. We are made differently, and that should not exist. And so um, we will see how that goes this year. And, you know, this has been an issue that's been in the headlines again uh, recently with the USA Boxing saying that men can now compete uh, against women, can be included in the women categories. And I find that really disturbing because you're, you're talking about punching women in the face, like someone biologically male punching women in the face. And they keep saying that they're going to have some restrictions on just hormonal levels and things like that. But I don't think that's going to affect your bone density and your structure as a male, right? So it's it's still going to be unfair and even life-threatening. Yeah, I again, I we know men and women are different. Not there's no amount of drugs and things that can be taken that will turn a woman into a man or a man into a woman. And so functionally the reality is you are going to be smacked in the face 
by a biological just, male, no matter what he calls himself. And I think I saw something about this happening to a woman in her school breaking. Oh, like, it's, it's, it's just, so dangerous. And even, I mean, you know, there's a number of sports that are dangerous. This one is the, the yeah. <laughs> probably the scariest one I've really thought about is it, boxing. It really is. But, you know, I saw a male volleyball player, you know, playing in a women's, I mean, that's horrifying. But like, this was at your daughter's high school Well, level, yeah, right? I've seen that. I Yeah, <laughs> I have, <laughs> well, I have seen that on travel. I've seen these, yeah. Yeah, but, but no, I was thinking there's a, there's a, a, a national video that's out okay. with a, uh, I mean, and if you watch college level or beyond volleyball with men and watch it with women, these women are going to get pounded in the head. I mean, they're, they're great. They're great. But these guys, the strength of the hits is unbelievable. And so, so it's yes. going to be horrifying. Trying to do what we can in Virginia with protecting, yeah. um, you know, what, K through, it's K, at least one of these bills um, K yeah. through college. Yeah, all the way through college in some cases. Okay. So if we can get it done, let's get it done. All right. I'm going to list one. Last, our third good thing to watch for, and that is what's going on with education, that we are going to be out there speaking up for more education freedom. Because right now you have this situation where there are way too many kids just being asked to, basically adults being asked, uh, telling them to wait while they get the schools in order. And I think a good example of this is when all these schools shut down for COVID and there were, you know, if you didn't have access to a private school, your family wasn't, um, you know, didn't have the means to afford a private school, you're pretty much forced to um, have your kid out of school, not doing these ineffective online, you know, things. And that really demonstrated the options that we need. Not to mention the fact that they're still devastatingly behind in scoring, you know, the losses, academic losses from COVID that we still haven't caught up on in Virginia. I think we were have some of yeah, the worst we're, we're losses. some of the worst yeah. in the country. There is zero question that we did the wrong thing by closing those schools. And anybody that says differently is not looking at the numbers. And so, yes, private schools that stayed open saved kids, literally yeah. saved these kids. Um, and I just want to remind people, because some people might go, well, you're going into a legislature that seems pretty hostile to this. You know, it took us something like 14 years-ish, maybe more, to pass the, the tuition tax credit program that we have, mm -hmm. that little bit of school choice educational freedom that we do have and it, so we went in season out of season we went you know every to every single legislative session we brought that forward and we moved the conversation and we started moving you know people of both parties in the right direction and so we hope we will be successful on this but it, there is value to pushing it every year and gaining ground and so that's what we're going to do yeah and on all these measures to that point um you know um the born alive um, the adoption tax credit, we're, a lot of this is about messaging. Um, even if things don't get through this year, we, we want to keep having this conversation on all of that, right? Uh, 100%, even when you don't win a bill. So we hope we win on these things. Even if you don't, you have had the public conversation, which means that you are in educating all sorts of folks that maybe aren't aware of this issue, both within the legislature and in the media, because it gets talked about in articles and television shows and all those, all those kinds of things. But also, I mean, you're not just moving public conversation, you're also exposing those that are opposed to it so mm -hmm. that when they run the next time you have a vote you've seen where they stand they've made statements and that's important when we Good get to the point. ballot box we get to i mean it's kind of a, a continuous fluid cycle and it's all important and so yeah we're going to move these things forward we're going to beg everyone regardless of their party to be on board with educational freedom because it's it's helping the kids yeah so on that educational freedom um you mentioned the tax credit scholarship program that we do have i think that's helping at least five thousand students um, that may, you know, ha ha be struggling more financially with their family to be able to get the best education where their child's going to thrive. So this gives them that freedom. And so we have at least 5,000 kids, I think, benefiting from that. Um, and let's just talk about uh, real quick a way to expand that more freedom would be the education savings accounts. Yeah, right? absolutely. So, I mean, the tuition tax credit program is impacted by what your family income is, is impacted. I mean, there are parameters around that. But, you know, education savings account is sort of intended to be anyone. We should basically take a certain amount of money that we're already going to pay per student and allow the parent to direct those funds. I mean, that's a simplistic for way It could of be for homeschooling, for, for tutoring, anything. Exactly. School. Yeah. Exactly. Now, I mean, we need to protect the program we have and we need to expand. So it's all of the above is really, really important because, I mean, I think of those 5,000 kids, when you're talking about COVID, those kids were probably the kids that would have been stuck at home, yes. not learning. And instead, they were in buildings learning yes. because of the tuition tax exactly. credit program. Well, while we're trying to move that forward in a positive way, we, I hate to go negative again, but we are, we do uh, want to be on the watch for efforts to take away what we do have. Right. So there's a sunset issue, right, that we need to be aware I of. I mean, yeah, the, to every tax credit in Virginia 
gets put in with a sunset, meaning okay. we're going to try this out for a while. And if we decide we don't want it later, it's going to just magically disappear. And so you have to renew them. Okay. And so this tax credit does have a sunset of 2027. And so we don't wait till 2027 to say this is a great program yeah. because we're going to need people to reintroduce it. We actually, you know, ahead of time need to be kind of showing up, telling our legislators how beneficial this is to their kids in their district. Yeah, and it's this Senate, the makeup of this Senate, yes. that will ultimately make the choice of whether that is going to sunset in 2027. So Yeah, so you're talking to the very you people. Need to talk to them now. Yes, I mean, <laughs> if we hit them this year, so this is 2024, then we hit them in 2025, then we hit them in 2026. By the time we get to the potential of it phasing out, we hopefully have really moved the needle with these specific individuals. All right, well, let me tell you real quick how you can be empowered to speak on this specific issue that is coming up on Wednesday, January 24th, we are having Kids Deserve More Day at the Capitol. And please help us get the administrators of these private schools, the parents and students who want more education freedom, don't want their scholarship to go away, want these opportunities to have the best environment, the safest environment for their kid where they're going to thrive. So we are going to be challenging representatives, senators that yeah, kids deserve more. We, we need to stop letting them fail because we're afraid to let the parents make the decision, give them that freedom. Did you want to add anything onto that? Um, no, but I do want to make sure people know they can go to our website to find yes. out about this day. So just familyfoundation.org if you're interested in coming down and joining us because I think um, yeah. it's going to be a fantastic day to make to make this point. Yeah, we have a banner up on the website where uh, you can click on and register, but even more specific, familyfoundation.org slash kids deserve more. Uh, familyfoundation.org slash kids deserve more. Well, it's that time again. Time for our Inconceivable Moments Award. This is where we're featuring examples of the absolute lunacy and craziness that happens when cultural leaders try to give guidance completely apart from biblical principles. And we're calling this the Liberals' Most Inconceivable Moments Award. Inconceivable! So, Victoria, have you heard about this crazy thing going on in New York right now where lawmakers are actually trying to force some Chick-fil-A's to stay open on Sundays? And it just seems a little crazy to me because it wasn't it not too long ago that they were trying to force these boycotts of Chick-fil-A and tell people to stay away, maybe even close them down. It's like pick one. Do you want them to be open or do you want them to be closed? How about we just let them do what they want to do? But well, that's a sad that. point. But yeah, I do remember when Mayor de Blasio was telling New Yorkers not to go to Chick-fil-A many years ago. And, you know, if you remember, there was all that. We like we all, you know, there was like a big yeah. day where we all kind of rallied behind Chick-fil-A and everybody yeah. went out. Everybody went and got their we Chick-fil-A. We went and supported Chick-fil-A. Because um, yeah. remember, this was all about their stance on biblical marriage. Yeah. And they didn't even have an official. It was literally about just some some uh, funding that it was. Anyway, it it got I mean, so it was all about we, banning them from yes. college campuses. Yeah, that was the big thing stuff. is colleges yeah. dare not get a Chick-fil-A in, yeah. in food courts. I will say, having been now, unfortunately, on a lot of college tours, most of them have Chick-fil-A's. It just seems like everywhere I'm going, I am seeing Chick-fil-A in the food court at colleges. So they're, they, they're uh, doing pretty well on that front. Yeah, the chicken sandwich went I, out. I hate to say it. I think it's literally that people want the food. Yeah, and they want the, it's the, good They food. want the food over the politics, which, yeah. you know, on the conservative side, a lot of people want their coffee over what Starbucks stands for, right? So it's like in both directions. It's right. like some, sometimes the product wins out. They, off, they also want food served politely with pleasure. So, yeah, yes. yeah, exactly. It's probably the manners that are actually yeah. winning out because you don't get that at um, you know, Burger King. Oh, I should pick right. on one. That's not fair. Sorry, Burger All King. Right. Before we get ourselves in trouble here, yes. let me just um, give a few more details on what is actually happening here. So you have New York representatives considering a bill. I saw that it was proposed in December. And it says restaurant, this is how they're doing this, restaurants operating uh, ba basically on their busy state highways, throughways, where there are rest stop areas. They're trying to say the restaurants at these rest stop areas that, you know, I guess the, the government is involved with the operating that whole area or something. And so the restaurants at these rest stop areas would have to be open seven days a week. Now, you know, they're saying, well, people are on busy highways. They need to have access to these restaurants. And, you know, you might think, OK, this is just for the convenience of people. But here's the deal. Chick-fil-A was actually mentioned in the bill's justification section. So I do think they are definitely targeting Chick-fil-A with this. Plus, you've got the bill sponsor, Tony Simone, who's pretty open about how he just doesn't like Chick-fil-A. So let's just... Real quick, listen to this uh, part of this Fox News clip report on this. 
sound so friendly. The Democrat who proposed the bill in New York, his name is Tony Simone, he says, quote, not only does Chick-fil-A have a long, shameful history of opposing LGBTQ rights, it simply makes no sense for them to be a provider of food services in busy travel plazas. Drivers are on the thruway on Sunday. Chick-fil-A, they responded as well. Let's put up that quote. Having worked seven days a week in restaurants open 24 hours, the founder saw the importance of closing on Sundays so that he and his employees could set aside one day to rest or worship if they choose. A practice we uphold today. That is on the website. So here's, here's where we're at, Anita. In 2021, Democrats in New York opposed Chick-fil-A coming to this state altogether, and now they're saying, all right, now you're here, we're going to tell you when you can and cannot be open. Yeah, I, they can't have it both ways. Leftists can't try to basically say, don't you know, don't go there and now force them open. And, you know, just remind people, people at Chick-fil-A is closed because it is a place of faith and they want their workers to be able to go and worship. That's always been sort of the, the thing. And so this is ridiculous. But also, remember the COVID thing. I mean, like, we got to talk about, like, the, the idea that a government can – shut down a business when it wants it can force it open when it wants this is i mean and also i just sat there and thought like did they allow any of these restaurants during covid to you know Be like forced to open have certain hours or certain <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, yeah they're playing games the way they want to yeah. play games and i think we all know it and um certainly chick-fil-a knows it so, they're so targeted. the bigger concern here is the government can force open and shut for local for businesses yeah that, local businesses that's at the what scary point part. is a private business a private business and not subject to the government i mean this is yeah. these are yes they are on government land yes that you know like i mean they are beside a highway y yes they are used as you know here we're going to put a sign on the highway this is where you can stop yeah. that doesn't make them a government entity in any way shape or form and so um if we get to the point where it's like oh this is people's convenience is what is the controlling factor for how that, government yeah, regulates private. We're, we're in big trouble. That's so the ramifications are huge, even for people who maybe chicken sandwiches isn't as important. Yeah, and it, it does seem like this is part of a larger trend. You know, in addition to the government control issues, it does seem... Well, remember, a, they had the soda issues in New York, too. We, <laughs> yeah, we, we could really go a uh, long ways with what's happening else. in New York. But there's also this, I think, um, bigger trend of punishing Christian entities for their biblical beliefs because we've seen, I think I saw proposals in New York before trying to ban Chick-fil-A on these throughways, which is, it's so ironic, but, um, I, you know, Chick-fil-A is very open about its mission statement. I'm just going to read part of this here, quote, their mission statement is, quote, to glorify God by being a faithful steward of all that is, is entrusted to us and to have a positive influence on all who come in contact with Chick-fil-A. So they're very open about that. And like you said, they've been closed on Sunday since 1946 when they started. So it's, it's ridiculous. Well, you, you just you, you have to remember that I'm sure they thought, oh, it's not open on Sundays. Eventually this thing won't take off. But Chick-fil-A has been beating everybody else. And so they have to deal with it. They have to. It, I mean, it, how that works. Right. Like their good principles have helped them flourish. And yeah. therefore the, the government has to step in and take another direction. And we're so, you know. Liberals are so into increasing minimum wage for the worker. Well, do you want the worker to be able to rest like <laughs> during the week? You know, just work seven days a week with no stopping. I, I don't know. You got a great point. All right. Well, real quick, just a quick reminder on our Capital Action Day is coming up. So as we talked about, Kids Deserve More Day, Wednesday, January 24th. Um, let me <laughs> make that clear. January 24th. And then Mama Bear Day. Put this on your calendar, Thursday, February 15th, and Virginia March for Life Day, Wednesday, February 21st. So we're going to be talking more about that, but just put those on your calendar. All right, well, thanks for joining us, and make sure to share our podcast to get the word out to as many people as possible. Remember, we are stronger when we speak together. We'll see you next time.